The jury acquitted undocumented immigrant Jose Inez Garcia Zarate on the most serious charges, murder and manslaughter. The only conviction, felony possession of a firearm. Tonight, the reaction is pouring in from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. Andrea Borba begins our team coverage. She was in the courtroom when the verdict came down. Tonight, she's on Pier 14, where Kate Steinle was killed. Andrea? Elizabeth, Ken, this story began here on July 1st, 2015. Tonight, a small crowd has gathered here on Pier 14. They are lighting candles and putting up flags near where Kate Steinle was killed following today's stunning verdict in the Hall of Justice. Six days of deliberation in the case of Jose Inez Garcia Zarate ended with a hug between the suspect and his public defender, Matt Gonzalez. Two years after Kate Steinle was killed on Pier 14, the only guilty verdict for Mr. Zarate was for being a felon in possession of a firearm. The verdict that came in today was not one we were hoping for. Public defender Matt Gonzalez argued that the gun went off accidentally before a bullet ricocheted off the concrete pier and struck Steinle in the back. It was the first time a ricochet bullet case was charged as a first-degree murder in San Francisco. This case made its way to a trial courtroom for a reason. It made its way through a trial courtroom because at every stage, there was sufficient evidence necessary to go to court and go to trial. The gun used to kill Steinle was the secondary weapon of an employee of the Bureau of Land Management. It was stolen from his car in San Francisco, where it was not properly secured. Zarate said he found the gun wrapped in a t-shirt under a bench and admitted he was responsible for Steinle's death. Outside the courtroom, the jurors didn't speak to the throngs of reporters covering the case, which sparked a national debate over sanctuary cities and immigration. In the courtroom, the judge sealed the names and addresses of those jurors. Although this case was a terrible tragedy, our greatest fear is that Mr. Garcia Zarate would not be able to get a fair trial. The decision to try the case in San Francisco fell to Matt Gonzalez, who took a shot at President Trump, who had used Steinle's death to argue in favor of tightening immigration policy. They may themselves soon avail themselves of the presumption of innocence and the beyond a reasonable doubt standard. And so I would ask them to reflect on that before they comment or disparage the result in this case. Now, Kate's family was not in the courtroom as the verdict was read, but they did release this statement to the San Francisco Chronicle. They are saddened and shocked. Justice was rendered, but it was not served. Live in San Francisco, Andrea Borba, KPIX 5. Tonight, ICE blasted the city over the verdict, saying, quote, San Francisco's policy of refusing to honor ICE detainers is a blatant threat to public safety and undermines the rule of law. This tragedy could have been prevented if San Francisco had simply turned the alien over to ICE as we requested instead of releasing him back onto the streets. KPIX 5 political reporter Melissa Kane joins us now. You're also an attorney and watched kind of in amazement uh, down in that newsroom uh, this verdict as it came in because I don't think anyone predicted this one. Did it surprise you? Yes, it did. I was one of the people who did not prepare for this kind of outcome. I mean, we know that he had the gun in his possession, that it was the gun that fired the bullet that ultimately killed Miss Steinle. And what the defense was arguing is that this was a freak accident. And those kinds of accidents just seem to, I think, those of us who are watching as sort of a red herring, not enough to constitute reasonable doubt. But it looks like inside that courtroom, the defense was able to put together enough of these kinds of facts and these kind of incidents that have happened before where the gun has gone off to, to sort of add up to a reasonable doubt for these folks. So he's convicted of uh, being in possession uh, illegally of a firearm. Um, but I think what's going to frustrate people is, is that there's, there's a victim here. Uh, somebody died as a result of this. Um, I don't know if you want to call it negligence. I don't know if you call it an accident, but there's a person dead and there's nobody really being brought 
to bear to answer to that crime. Well, yeah, one of the things that the defense argued was, you know, none of this is going to bring Ms. Steinle back. You know, finding him guilty or making sure he goes to jail for a long period of time is not the thing that's going to bring her back. And, and we do have this really frustrating issue of no real motive in this case. I think the prosecution really wrestled with trying to figure out how do you explain the why, which is a very human thing that I think the jurors wanted to know and that, you know, we generally would like to know. But when you have someone who's never seen this person before, it's, it seems just totally random, it's, um, it's hard to explain, you know, sort of any kind of ill intent on the part of the shooter. I think I, in defense of the jury, uh, the, it, not only the why, but also the how. I think that was up for debate. Did it go off by itself? There's no safety on this Sig Sauer weapon. Uh, uh, did he drop it? Did he point it? There are a lot of unanswered questions, and, and maybe that jury felt like they could not be certain about any of the facts in this case. Uh, that seems to be the case, that you add up, you know, the gun comes from nowhere, it's sitting there, maybe, maybe not, it's got the safety on, to your point, maybe, maybe not, it's, it, maybe it's, there's a gun in the, there's a bullet in the chamber that's, so it's ready to go and, you know, sort of go off at the slightest provocation. So, uh, certainly, again, so you add up all of those uh, tiny issues, they can be a, a big chunk of reasonable doubt that can make uh, make for a really difficult time prosecuting a, a case like this. Yeah, and so he's looking at 18 to three years, and he's already served a butt. Yeah, he's already served over two years, so it's possible he'll get time served in a little probation. We'll know more about that at the sentencing phase, but I want to be very clear, he is not walking out of that courtroom a free man at any point. The federal government has a warrant for him. That's a, it's not the same thing as those things that we ignore from ICE, the, the, the requests that we ignore. San Francisco will and does abide by a federal warrant, and so the federal government is going to take possession of him whenever the, the, the city and the state are done with this prosecution. So he will not be uh, walking free anytime soon. All right. Melissa Kane, thank you for your analysis. Thank Appreciate you. it. A lot of people weighing in. Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell among them. He represents the Steinle family's district. Tweeted earlier, I greatly respect our jury system, but I could not disagree more with this verdict. I pray for Kate's family. As for why it took the jury six days to reach a verdict, well, UC Hastings law professor tells us the big challenge for jurors was to agree on what was happening inside the suspect's head. It is always very difficult in cases like this to figure out what the defendant was thinking. Whenever we're dealing with intent, we have to imagine what another th person wanted or thought or expected. And since we are not that person, that is very, very hard to do. The San Francisco Sheriff's Office told us tonight the sheriff holds people and takes direction from the courts and the jury. The jury made its decision. Sentencing is set for two weeks from today. Sanctuary City critics are also blasting San Francisco on Twitter tonight. But Bay Area immigration advocates tell KPIX 5's Maria Medina they should be looking at the whole story, not just this ending. Immigration advocates say politicians and the public need to look at the big picture, not to focus on the fact that Jose Zarate had been deported five times and was wanted for a sixth deportation. When is enough enough? When you look at what happened, there was a whole chain of tragic events that led to this incident happening. Criminal justice reform attorney Syra Hussein says immigration advocates like herself are concerned about the administration's response to the verdict. Once again, we're seeing the administration trying to use this tragedy as a means of carrying out their agenda of mass deportation, and I think we need to reject that. Soon after a jury acquitted Zarate in the murder, Attorney General Jeff Sessions released a statement saying in part, quote, San Francisco's decision to protect criminal aliens led to the preventable and heartbreaking death of Kate Steinle. The president also tweeted, a disgraceful verdict. No wonder the people of our country are so angry with illegal immigration. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. It's not the first time he's spoken about the case. The president condemned illegal immigration from Mexico two weeks after his bid for the Republican nomination. Another victim is Kate Steinle, gunned down in the sanctuary city of San Francisco. This has been painted as being an issue around immigration and, and really 
the, the issues are pretty complex. Immigration advocates say the discussion should instead focus on more than immigration, like the stolen law enforcement guns Arate found and then used on that fateful day. When you look at what actually happened and the chain of events that led to this tragedy, mm -hmm. it's not about immigration. But a lot of people at home are going to say if he was deported, if he was back in Mexico, Kate Steinle might still be alive today. Once again, I think you need to look at the chain of events that caused this situation to happen, right? She also says people need to have a discussion about drugs. Zarate had a marijuana charge dropped, but remember, because of that, he was released from jail despite having a request to be deported. Three months later, Steinle was dead. In San Jose, Maria Medina, KPIX 5. We reached out to the San Francisco mayor's office tonight. They told us no comment.